It was one of the most anticipated space games and simply didn't make the cut. Kerbal Space Program 2 launched into early access at the start of 2023, and before too long, in what less than a year, the game almost more or less went end of line, disappeared into the ether. Well, the good news is there's now a new game on the horizons, KSA, called Kitten Space Agency. This is a game that's intended to be a spiritual successor to a Kerbal Space Program, and it perhaps couldn't have come at a better time. Take-Two recently announced that they have sold off a private division and its associated games and IPs. The studio behind KSP2 itself, uh, Intercept Games, has now been confirmed to be shut down by Take-Two, despite Take-Two denying that earlier in the year. This has all taken place as a part of the sale of a private division to an as yet unnamed company. What this means for the future of the Kerbal IP, or indeed for the future of Kerbal Space Program 2, remains entirely unclear at the moment. Nothing has been confirmed one way or the other. All we know for sure is that the studio behind the development of this game is now not in existence. Whatever way this goes in the future though, there is another game on the horizons as we've talked about, the KSA, Kitten Space Agency. So this title is being developed by Rocketworks under the leadership of its CEO, Dean Hall. And you may remember Dean from his work with on the Day Z, very renowned for that. So ultimately, KSA is all about following in the footsteps and building upon the work built by a Kerbal Space Program. Now, one of the biggest problems with KSP and ultimately with KSP2 was issues that became notoriously known as the Kraken. These were physics glitches resulting from floating point errors within the KSP engine, and Rocketworks are acutely aware of these limitations and therefore have been tackling them by building a completely custom engine from scratch rather than relying on established platforms like Unity or Unreal Engine. So recognising that existing engines often falter under the demands of accurate space physics and large-scale simulations, the team developed a bespoke framework called Brutal. Brutal has been designed with a number of things in mind. These include performance optimization, multi-threading capabilities, precision in physics calculations, and a direct access to low-level APIs. The goal is to make KSA a seamless space exploration experience that really does emphasize realism and player freedom. The game intends to employ sophisticated techniques to ensure that transitions from orbiting a planet to landing on its surface are smooth and uninterrupted. Now, there's also the realistic orbital simulation here, because yes, KSP was very much known for that, and KSA is going to be the same. It uses real astronomical data to uh, simulate the orbits of planets, moons, comets, and asteroids. Unlike its predecessors, the game accurately models complex trajectories, including hyperbolic and parabolic orbits. And this means those travels between the various planetary bodies should be well, far more interesting and perhaps more engaging. Now on screen you can see some very early footage for some, from some uh, developer live streams on KSA. The speed at which people are moving around here in engine is, uh, well, speaks volumes and hopefully says a lot about the capabilities of the engine. From zooming all the way out from some of these planetary bodies all the way in to seeing a very fine detail when up close. So the game does feature high resolution terrain and this will be complete with the detailed height maps and texture data. It's a level of attention to detail that should hopefully enhance immersion, especially during a planetary surface exploration. For those of you who are interested in the technical side or looking to mod the game, KSA also offers wireframe and debug modes, and these modes allow for players to visualize underlying structures of some of the in-game objects, and this should hopefully provide some insight into the game's workings. Quite naturally, that means modding is intended to be a major, major focus of this game. Obviously, we all know that KSP had a very, a very strong modding community, so that means, uh, well, KSA is likely to have the same. Obviously, this is aiming towards the same players and the same community. And this could mean everything from adding in modded vehicles all the way up to modding the galaxy and the solar system itself. So yeah, that means modifying existing worlds as well as adding in new ones entirely. It also seems that the development team are not going to focus exclusively on creating the solar system, but rather should be creating some additional customised star systems as well. Now, to be perfectly clear here, details about how the game itself is going to work are very vague at the moment, especially in terms of gameplay and its overall objectives and focus. 
What we do know is that the intent is for this to be a KSP successor. And yes, that means that when it comes to space vehicles, these will be constructed in parts, much like with KSP. There's currently a three hour live stream, developer live stream available. I'll link that in the video description if you do want to check that out. For now, this seems to give more of an insight as to the intents of the developers, as well as highlighting the current uh, developer tools. And these are showcased to pretty good effect. When it comes to gameplay loops though, specific details about missions, objectives, or how players will interact with the game world uh, on a deeper level are not yet available, or at least not very clear. Information about the game's content, such as the variety of parts for vehicle construction, planter environments, story elements, or progression system, also remains pretty limited, although it does seem that the game is going to have many of those things. When it comes to visual and artistic direction, obviously all the footage on the screen we're seeing right here is from the development tools, and although these do, to my eyes, look impressive because that they show of a great scale, they really do highlight the vast scale that the game is going to have, and they really do highlight the details of the surfaces and the worlds themselves, what they don't do is really visualize the artistic style or direction that the team is going to go in, and the developers have acknowledged that they've not yet focused on the game's art style or visual assets at this stage, but prioritizing instead the technical development. Also, yes, kittens are involved in the whole process here, but I'm sure no real-world kittens were harmed. These, for the moment, remain a playful use of characters, much like the Kerbals, I guess, from KSP. But whether or not they ultimately remain in, as part of the game, well, well, I guess will remain to be seen. For now, uh, like with many other things, all of this is subject to change uh, as development continues. So yeah, for now, the whole situation with KSA is currently more about outlining the developer's intentions and showcasing the technical capabilities of the tools they are building. The focus is certainly on establishing a strong foundation and hopefully building a community very early on. And hopefully, this should address the limitations they've observed in other space simulation games. In my opinion then, my take on this is they're starting from a very good point indeed. Perhaps one of the strongest things about KSP, certainly the original one, was indeed its community. Intercept Games, Private Division and Take-Two kind of ignored that, much to its detriment. Although they did involve the community to some extent, it was nowhere near to the extent that was there with the original one. So it looks like uh, this team, when it comes to KSA, are going the completely opposite direction and involving the community very early on. And this, uh, in my eyes, is a very, very good thing. So that's much of what we know about KSA at the moment. As I touched on at the beginning of the video though, there is that whole situation with the KSP2, Private Division and Intercept Games. And I talked about it in brief at the start of the video, but I want to go into a few more details right here. So Take-Two has sold its indie-focused publishing label, Private Division. We now have that confirmed. It's been sold to an undisclosed buyer. The sale includes nearly all of Private Division's active and upcoming projects, but the identity of the buyer is expected to be revealed relatively soon, at least according to a Take-Two. Now, prior to the sale of Private Division, Take-Two confirmed the closure of two studios under the Private Division uh, umbrella, under the Private Division label. This include Intercept Games, the developer of KSP2, as well as Roll7, who were known for the Oli Oli Skating series. Now, the closure of Intercept Games has, of course, had a significant impact on KSP2. The game itself was released into early access in early 2023 and is currently facing, unfortunately, an uncertain future. Many people within the community, including myself, feel that the game is very likely dead although uh, this perhaps could change depending on what the new owners decide to do with the game itself as well as the IP. Now obviously, ever since this information came to light quite a few months back, players have been review bombing KSP2 on Steam with recent reviews of overwhelmingly negative. That's just 11% positive out of all recent reviews. It's in a pretty bad state and, you know, understandably so. A lot of people are just not happy about the way this unfolded. And a lot of this is down to the way that this whole issue has been communicated to the KSP2 player base. Basically, it hasn't. The uh, community has had to piece this information together piece by piece from uh, various different bits of information. And of course, many players are also concerned that the project itself may never see its final release. Obviously, this went into early access with some extensive promises for a very, very complex game. Previously, Take-Two have said that Private Division will continue to support KSP2, 
but you know, whatever happens from this point forward may well be different. Now, Take-Two's decision to sell private division and close these studios also reflects a shift in the company's focus. The company has said that Take-Two excels in creating major AAA titles, and that is the experience, that is the game, the type of titles they want to focus on in the future. And unfortunately, it means that titles like KSP2 just no longer fall within their field of experience or the type of games they want to create. And yes, Take-Two uh, is particularly focused on the development of GTA 6, which is still expected to release in the fall of 2025. And ultimately, regardless of what our personal take is on any of this, games that simply don't get bigger than GTA 6. It's also worth briefly mentioning that Tales of the Shire, a Lord of the Rings game, has also been acquired by the new buyer. Project Bloom, an action-adventure game by Game Freak, is also a part of the acquisition. Take-Two have said that they'll retain and continue to support No Rest for the Wicked, which is an action RPG by Moon Studios, and that one is currently in early access. So there we have it, that's the current story and the current situation with KSP2, Intercept Games, Private Division, and the new contender at Kitten Space Agency. Thanks for watching this video all the way through. Do check out the other video on the screen right here. I'll catch you all next time, and do take care.